Elizabeth Fritzel from Lower Austria was held captive by her father, Josef Fritzel, in the cellar of their home for 24 years. Josef Fritzel decided to imprison Elizabeth after she did not adhere to any rules when she became a teenager. Fritzel assaulted, sexually abused and raped his daughter repeatedly, resulting in the birth of seven children. In August of 1984, after Elizabeth turned 18, Yosef lured her into the basement of their home, saying that he needed help carrying a metal door. In reality, Fritzel had been converting the basement into a makeshift prison chamber, and the door was the last thing he needed to seal it. He held an ether-soaked towel on Elizabeth's face until she was unconscious. Fritzel had enlarged the cellar and installed a wash basin, toilet, bed, hot plate, and refrigerator. It was located behind a shelf in Fritzel's basement workshop, protected by an electronic code entered using a remote control unit. In order to reach this door, five locking rooms had to be crossed. To get to the area where Elizabeth and her children were held, eight doors in total were needed to be unlocked. After Elizabeth's disappearance, her mother, and Fritzel's wife, Rosemary, filed a missing person's report. Fritzel told police that she joined a cult, and even handed over one of several letters he had forced Elizabeth to write. The letter stated that she was tired of living with her family and was staying with a friend. The letter also falsely stated that she warned her parents not to look for her or she would leave Austria. Over the next 24 years, Fritzel visited Elizabeth in the hidden chamber almost every day, bringing food and other supplies, while repeatedly raping her. Elizabeth gave birth to seven children during her captivity. One child died shortly after birth, and three, named Lisa, Monica and Alexander, were removed from the chamber by Fritzel as babies. He convinced officials that they were abandoned by Elizabeth on his doorstep, and his wife Rosemary also believed him. The family received regular visits from social workers, who saw and heard nothing to arouse their suspicions. Following the fourth child's birth in 1994, Fritzel allowed the enlargement of the prison, putting Elizabeth and her captive children to work digging out soil with their bare hands for years. The captives had a television, a radio, and a video cassette player. Food could be stored in a refrigerator and cooked or heated on hot plates. Elizabeth taught the children to read and write. At times, Fritzel would punish the family by shutting off their lights or refusing to deliver food for days at a time. Fritzel told Elizabeth and the three children who remained in the chamber, Kerstin, Stepan, and Felix, that they would be gassed if they tried to escape. He also told them that they would be electrocuted if they tried to meddle with the cellar door. According to Fritzel's sister-in-law, Christine, his excuse for going to the basement for very long hours of the day was part of his work to draw plans for machines he sold to manufacturing firms. He often stayed there for the night and did not allow his wife to bring him coffee. A former tenant, who rented a room on the ground floor for 12 years, claimed to hear noises from the basement, which Fritzel said were caused by the faulty pipes or the gas heating system. On April 19, 2008, Kerstin, Elizabeth's eldest daughter, fell unconscious, and Fritzel agreed to seek medical attention. While the mother was away, Elizabeth helped Fritzel carry Kerstin out of the chamber and saw the outside world for the first time in 24 years. He forced her to return to the chamber, where she remained for a final week. Kerstin was taken by ambulance to a local hospital and was admitted in serious condition with life-threatening kidney failure. Fritzel later arrived at the hospital, claiming to have found a note written by the mother, Elizabeth. Medical staff found aspects of Fritzel's story puzzling and alerted the police on April 21. The police reopened the case file on Elizabeth's disappearance. Fritzel repeated his story about Elizabeth being in a cult and presented what he claimed was the most recent letter from her, dated January 2008. The police contacted a church officer and expert on cults who raised doubts about the existence of the group Fritzel described. He noted that Elizabeth's letters seemed dictated and oddly written. On April 26, Fritzel released Elizabeth from the cellar along with her sons, Stepan and Felix, bringing them upstairs. He and Elizabeth went to the hospital where Kirsten was being treated. Following a tip-off from the doctor that Fritzel and Elizabeth were at the hospital, the police detained them on the grounds and took them to the station for questioning. Elizabeth did not provide police with more details until they promised her that she would never have to see her father again. Over the next two hours, she told the story of her 24 years in captivity. 
Shortly after midnight, police officers completed the investigation. Fritzel, aged 73, was arrested on April 26 on suspicion of serious crimes against family members. During the night of April 27, Elizabeth, her children and her mother, Rosemary, were taken into civil care. Rosemary had been unaware of what had been happening to Elizabeth, convinced by her husband this whole time. It was revealed that Elizabeth and her children were more traumatized than previously thought. During captivity, Kirsten tore out her hair in clumps. Stepan could not walk properly because of his height of 173 centimeters, or 5 foot 8, which had forced him to stoop in the 168 centimeters, or 5 foot 6 cellar. It has also been revealed that normal everyday occurrences, such as the dimming of lights or the closing of doors, plunged Kirsten and Stepan into anxiety and panic attacks. The three children who were raised upstairs by Fritzel and Rosemary were being treated for anger and resentment when the truth was revealed. Fritzel's defense lawyer, Rudolf Mayer, said that although the DNA test proved incest, evidence was still needed for the allegations of rape and enslavement. In their May 1 daily press conference, Austrian police said that Fritzel had forced Elizabeth to write a false letter indicating that she wanted to come home. Police believe Fritzel was planning to pretend to have rescued his daughter from her fictitious cult. On November 2008, Josef Fritzel stood trial for the murder of his infant son, Michael, who died shortly after birth and faced between 10 years and life imprisonment. He was also charged with rape, incest, kidnapping, false imprisonment and slavery, which carry a maximum 20-year term. Josef Fritzel had several criminal records prior to his assault on his daughter. In 1967, he broke into the home of a 24-year-old nurse while her husband was away and raped her while holding a knife to her throat. According to an annual report and a press release of the same year, he was also named as a suspect in a case of attempted rape of a 21-year-old woman, and he was also known for indecent exposure. He also locked his mother in the attic and bricked up her window while telling neighbors that she died. It is unknown how long Fritzel kept his mother locked up in his attic, but newspapers have speculated that it may have been up to 20 years. Fritzel was arrested and served 12 months of an 18-month prison sentence. In accordance with Austrian law, his criminal record was expunged or erased after 15 years. After being taken into care, Elizabeth, her six children, and mother Rosemary were housed in a local clinic where they were shielded from the outside environment and received medical and psychological treatment. Members of the Fritzl family were offered new identities, but it was emphasized that it was their choice to make. The head of the clinic where Elizabeth and her children were being treated said that she and all her children required further therapy. The downstairs children's therapy was due to their deprivation from normal development, such as lack of fresh air and sunshine, and the adjustment to daylight after years in semi-darkness. A separate therapist was needed to tackle the abuse they and their mother received from Fritzel, and social coping mechanisms in dealing with the outside world, such as strangers and technology. The upstairs children were also greatly traumatized, especially after police and media intervention. They needed therapy after learning that their father had lied about their mother abandoning them, the physical and emotional abuse from Fritzel, and learning that their siblings were imprisoned under their feet. But all of the children might have genetic problems common to children born of an incestuous relationship. In May 2017, Josef Fritzl changed his name to Josef Meerhoff due to getting into a prison fight that resulted in several of his teeth getting knocked out. In April 2019, it was reported that Fritzl's health was declining and that he didn't want to live anymore. Their house was seized during the trial and scheduled to be raised, but has since been converted as an apartment after several renovations, renting around 500 euros per month. By March 2010, an article by The Independent stated that Elizabeth's children had developed normal sibling relationships. Despite Elizabeth's strained relationship with Rosemary, she has reportedly forgiven her mother for believing her father's falsifications. Now the children enjoy being outdoors, swimming, and playing video games. Kirsten, the eldest daughter who was hospitalized, was reunited with her family when she was awakened from her artificially induced coma due to kidney failure. Doctors said that she would make a full recovery.